Rheumatoid arthritis is not the only rheumatic disease. There are multiple rheumatic diseases. Let me talk a little bit about fibromyalgia, which is a common illness as well. Fibromyalgia occurs mostly in women, although there are men that are affected as well, less in teenagers, although there are some. Patients with fibromyalgia for a long time have been thought to be a little cuckoo because doctors didn't understand what their symptoms were and they didn't show any external disabilities, no deformities. But patients with fibromyalgia have multiple complaints which are very real. First and foremost is the pain. They have generalized pain above and below the waist, the right and left side of the body. That means everywhere. The pain can be severe. They also have problems with thinking. They can't think well. That's called cognitive dysfunction. In addition to that, they have profound fatigue. So they're tired, they hurt, they can't think. There is something called hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis dysfunction. That's the endocrine function which doesn't work well in patients with fibromyalgia. Let me just talk about the adrenal glands. Patients with fibromyalgia have interrupted sleep. They wake up frequently at night and they don't have a restorative sleep. The adrenal glands are working when patients are awake. When they fall asleep, the adrenal glands rest. So if patients are not sleeping well and not resting enough, the adrenal glands are not resting enough either. And then there is a state of exhaustion of the adrenal glands. That's going to produce variable degrees of fatigue. It's also important to note that when somebody sleeps in a deep state of sleep, they secrete growth hormone. Growth hormone in children makes them grow. But in adults, it repairs tissues. And throughout the day, we have microtrauma. We hurt ourselves. And so the growth hormone will repair all of that. And growth hormone makes you feel younger <laughs> and look better. So in order to keep looking young and to be energetic, we have to make sure that patients can sleep properly. It is better to avoid, if possible, hypnotics because they are addictive. So there are some natural medicines, which are nutritional supplements or medical foods that are effective. Not always, but many times. So one should try first that which is not going to be toxic. Patients with fibromyalgia have been found to have mycoplasma infection as well. In my opinion, although some infection can trigger fibromyalgia, and this is accepted in the medical literature, I believe that most of the times mycoplasma infections are cofactors. Mycoplasmas can be innocent bystanders. And when the immune system is depressed, such as when the adrenal glands are overproducing cortisol, which works like prednisone, a steroid that is immunosuppressant, then the innocent bystanders have the upper hand and that can contribute to the symptoms of fibromyalgia. We did find that more than half of our patients with fibromyalgia have mycoplasma infection as opposed to those healthy controls that I mentioned earlier. The healthy controls have less than 10% incidence of mycoplasma infection. There are many other symptoms of fibromyalgia which I am not getting to mentioning today but they have to be addressed and there are ways in which we can do so in order for patients to feel more comfortable.